All right, people, let's, let's go back to the word. How can you know the brother, the poor, the speck of your brother's right with a plank is in y'all? He said, first, first what? Remove the plank from your own eye, then you would know clearly how to remove the speck from your brother's eye. He's talking about righteous judgment. You got to make sure yourself is right before you point the finger at another person and say what they're doing wrong. But once you get cleansed from an area, let's say you have a vile problem with addiction and God has humbled you and now you're not addicted anymore. Now you can tell somebody else about addiction. But if you're still addicted, how can you tell somebody else about addiction? You know, you got to let the God, God cleanse you first. So let's say you got a bunch of people with a bunch of planks. They start a group. The Bible said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. So if you see this, would you want to be a part of that group anymore? You understand? Forgiveness does not involve remaining around certain people. I'm just being real with you. He said, how often do you forgive your brother? Seven times? He said, no. Seventy-seven times seven. Seventy, something like that. A lot of times in one day. Now, let me tell you something. This ain't added to the word now. Y'all better read between the lines on that. If you put keep, keep putting yourself in a situation, you're going to keep having to forgive. Did you catch that? You know this person's a liar. You know this, this person is deceitful. And you keep running around them. Now you got to constantly forgive. Why? Because the Bible says so. So you got to constantly forgive them. So you're hanging around them to put yourself to constantly have to forgive the same person. But eventually, some shit click in your mind. You know what, man? This person keep taking me out of character. I'm going to step back. Man, you don't hang with me no more. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It got a lot to do with me. Oh, man. You know, you ain't got to tell him why. Just step back. Look, you ain't got to forgive no more. You know, but if they come around, you know, treat them with respect, do the same thing. But you don't have to keep running with people that you got to keep forgiving constantly. That's the loophole. You better read between the lines. Because you got to abide by scripture. If the scripture say forgive them, that So you, you, if you choose to remain in that situation, you just might as well get reduced to for, ask for forgiveness 3,000 times a day. But that's exactly what you're going to do. Because they're going to stay pissing y'all. You're going to stay getting upset. You're going to stay getting angry. I know two people that they, every time they love me one another, they always wrong, but they always fight amongst one another. Constantly. In my marriage recently, me and my wife fought constantly. I couldn't be around it no more. I left home. Are oh, you wrong for that? You're supposed to stay your ground. If your eye calls you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand calls you to sin, Pluck it out. Sometimes the best way to stop yourself from sinning is to get all the way out the situation. And God is going to be proud of you for that. Because whatever God wants to fix, he's going to fix. Sometimes you got to step back out of the situation, out of the crowd, out of the area, in order for the Lord to do what he do. Because it causes you to sin, causes you to argue, fight, and fuss, call each other all kinds of names. But just think of it as a separation doesn't mean it's over. So just because you're separated from your husband or wife don't mean you go out there and start hanging with the people you was hanging with before you got married. And I see that all the time. They go right back to that crowd. The old proverb, the dog has returned to his own vomit. When you was married, you were so happy to go home and be with your husband or be with your wife. Now everything and, and have consensual sex with your husband and, and, and your, or your wife. And raise your kids good. But as soon as all hell break loose and you, you separate from your husband and your wife, you go right back to the world, go back to the same friends, and start having adultery and fornication. You start hanging with these same folks. Do you understand, people? No. 
remember if God gave you a marriage to save you from sin a fornication why would you go back to it because you're supposedly free I watched a video it was a woman and she had a, a, a divorce party well you can kind of do the math of what the divorce party consisted of everything against marriage that's what it was about their friend was so happy to throw her they were so happy that she was divorced they threw her a party wow those are some great friends if you look at it from a worldly perspective that's a sorrowful moment you understand I've been married twice and I can tell you a few things about this when I was going through my first divorce you ought to see how many people encourage you to mess up when you're going through problems. Family members, friends, groups. Leave them. Leave her. Go live for the world. Don't stay together for the kids. It ain't about them. You see, you know what the devil feeds off of? Oh, man, I'm going to smoke again. Sorry, people. You know what the devil feeds off of? Corruption, deceit, selfishness. Most divorces happen because of selfishness. Also, most spiritual awakenings happen because of what? Selfishness. It's time for me to start looking out for me. Numero uno, I got to get my life right. But you want to get your life right in the right area. With God, and you come to God in your selfishness. For him to cleanse you from selfishness. The world wants to feed, wants you to feed off your selfishness. You're horny. Go have sex. I don't know, I, that's the first word that came to my mind. You, most people probably don't like the word that I use the fact the word horny. Well, you're sexually aggravated. Go have sex. You're sexually aggravated. Go watch porn. One of my biggest weaknesses known to man. I was a porn addict. I loved it. But they don't make it right. That's their selfishness. I gotta get I gotta get some kind of release, some kind of way, and I gotta look at something to do it. You see how it works? You see how selfishness works? God wants to remove that from you. Imagine the world if it lived according to scripture. Look out for the well for our others, more you look, and not just your own. If everybody looked out for one another in a spiritual sense, providing what people need and put themselves on the back burner, the world would be a better place. But it's not the world. You know, most groups you flock to got a selfishness about it. You know, even some Christian groups, they hate everybody who ain't Christian. And that's wrong. He said, love your enemies. All sinners ain't your enemy. How you know that? Because you're a sinner. And sometimes you're an enemy to yourself. And sometimes you ain't. And sometimes you're an enemy to others. And sometimes you ain't. It is what it is. Accept it. But he said, perfect love cast out fear, right? I don't fear sin. I don't want to indulge in it, but I don't fear it. I don't fear sinners. I don't fear evil. Fear no evil, for thou art with me. You understand? I don't care if I'm hanging around a bunch of Muslims. No fear. I hope they don't have a clapping. We'll see if I can stand true to that word. But if I stand true to that word, God will give me the strength to stand too true in the face of adversity. We don't start hating, spreading hate 
because people do things different. We still love them. We love them by telling the truth. We ain't got to get up there and bash them, even though some of the stuff they wear be hilarious. I put it this way. I know it's, it's wrong to jive and joke, but I know God made a, a sense of humor too. You knew what you had on before you left the house. It was funny to me. Sorry. Lord, forgive me. You understand? We all say the false short of the glory. I'm just using real real talk with you, people. I'm going to speak plainly to you. I ain't speaking in parables. Straight up. But it's time to wake up. Get away from some of these groups. I'm talking about it could be something simple as a Facebook group. You know, there are many prayer groups on Facebook. Join them. You know, you are like, you know, one thing I done realized that a lot of Christians need to stop doing. I'm going to give you a chance to think. It's some major groups out there. Are you a Christian or a Republican? Which one? Are you a Christian or a Democrat? Which one? Are you a Christian or a liberal? Which one? I like the term independent. That's why I consider myself an independent. Because I can listen to the Republican side and see some of their views that make perfect sense. I can listen to the Democratic side and see some of their views and make sense. I can see the liberal side and see some of their views and it makes sense. But I have not found one that covers all the views of the Bible so far. That goes by that. Not too many political parties, even though they may call themselves Christian, in certain areas, they are not. I don't get into politics. I don't do it. I don't vote. From the Lord comes my help. I don't care who's the president, who's the governor, who's the mayor, the, the mayor. The Lord is the head of my life. I don't believe in groups. All they do is cause division. Now, if I'm a suffer, I'm gonna do like the Bible says. I'm gonna suffer as a Christian. I'm not gonna suffer as a Republican. I'm not gonna suffer as a Democrat. I'm not gonna suffer as a liberal. I'm not, not part of any political party. I'm part of the follower of Christ party. And anybody can join. Anybody can be a part of it. And one thing I realized about the body of Christ there are different parts. We don't have all got to be together. Because you got work to do, and I got work to do. We ain't got to hang together all the time. Because I know you got work to do for Christ. I'm not going to get upset, upset with you. Because I know my goal as a Christian is to bring more laborers to the harvest. I don't want you to spend all your time watching me. Or watching this video. I want you to spend more time growing spiritually. There's a speed trap ahead. That grow as a Christian. Become the temple of the Most High God. Become the church. I'm in the business of creating churches. Spiritual churches. Bodies. Not buildings. I don't care about a building. But he says, you got to, don't forsake. To come together with saints. You understand? And other Christians. You got to be of like minded. But you got to understand y'all have different paths. Same God, different paths, different parts of the body. You know, I spent many times preaching to my wife about this. Because I know we're a husband and a wife. And I know people like you and your husband and wife are supposed to be together at all times. But there are some missions that only require me. And there are some missions that only require her. So we can't be so selfish enough that we got to be around each other 24-7. You understand? We got missions. The way I look at this world, people, God made male and female for a reason. I think the perfect, me personally, I think the perfect way to do the gospel, women handle women, men handle men, unless you're a preacher and you got to handle it all. But even as a preacher, he's supposed to have a wife, so your wife's supposed to handle the women. It makes common sense when he gives the rules and regulations for the elect lady in the church. 
what the elect lady is supposed to do. Teach other women how to be wives and spirit-filled Christian to start their ministry. Oh, yeah, I had to say it. Start their, what they need to do to help. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we got different body parts, but we all come together every once in a while to commune and do what we got to do and do some praying. Do you understand, people? I don't believe personally. I don't care what other people say. Me personally, let me tell you something. I don't have to go to church every Sunday. Now, I'm not knocking on people that feel they got to. You feel that you got to go? Go. But you know, some Sundays, you got a different mission. Maybe one Sunday, you might have to go over there and reach this group. Because you are what? Becoming the church. So my God might have a mission for you outside of that building on a Sunday. I know some of you say, well, if it's on a Sunday, well, first of all, the Sunday ain't even the Sabbath day. Let me just get that straight. Seventh day is Saturday. That's your rest day. That's your day to honor the Most High God. Let's say on the Sabbath day, God got a mission for you. What do you do? You do what the Bible says. If you got a friend that's lost, or a sheep, a lost sheep, don't you go find it? If God got a mission for you to go reach out to somebody on the Sabbath day, that's what you do. You're still earning the Sabbath by giving honor to God, by doing what God told you to do in regards to the work that you got to do for him. That was pretty quick though, wasn't it? I talk fast sometimes. But if you got work to do for him, it don't matter what day it is. It could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because the work of a Christian is never completely done. Every day you wake up, you got something to do for him. In my walk, I didn't realize talking is one of my best abilities. So I didn't started talking. I know how to write too, but I like to speak to people. I hate texting. Because texting, you put what, how you think people feel in the text. You try to feel what they're saying and you'll misinterpret the text same way with the bible he said how can you hear without a preacher you need somebody that's going to rightly divide the word of truth because a lot of people can read the bible and misunderstand it that's what pastors come into play that's what teachers come into play that's where you come into play do you understand everybody can't teach the gospel everybody can't preach the gospel i didn't did video upon video upon this throughout the last few weeks. So if you want to figure out the, the rules and regulations for being a pastor, you can find them on here. Or you can just find them in your Bible. Hey, Google, what does the Bible say about church leaders? Okay, there you go. If you don't want to believe what I say, Google it. And it's going to pop up the King James, the New Living Translation, the NIV Translation, the 3000 translation they got going on out there. You're going to get what you're looking for. If you look for it. So what they tell you about a lot of people that join these groups, they didn't came to their realization of this is how it, it is. Whether it's right or wrong, I got a lot of people that agree with me on this. That's why a lot of Christians don't fit in. You know, I used to think that once you get in the church home, you sit there. I used to think that. That once you get in the church, that's it. That's the church you're going to be at for the rest of your life. Well, as far as me, okay, I can't speak for other people. I didn't realize God had me bounce around a little bit. You understand? I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm learning. Maybe I'm trying to figure out, hey, Houston, you see that? You see that? You see that? Pay attention. Don't do that. Do that. Don't do that. Do that. Is that right? No. What about that? Yeah. Okay. It's a learning thing. I like to go to multiple churches because I want to see who's lining up with the truth. Do you understand? 
I got one more for you, people, then I'm going to stop.